This is NBC Television. We have uh, obtained the results from the state of Ohio, which assures victory for President Truman and Senator Barkley. With Ohio's 25 electoral votes, President Truman and Senator Barkley will have a total of 266 votes in the Electoral College. This is the minimum figure necessary for victory. This figure, however, does not take into consideration the very favorable trends still developing in California, Colorado, Idaho, and Nevada. The final truman barkley total will reach and exceed 279 electoral votes. It marks a tremendous victory for American labor. For to the organized political efforts of Amer the American labor movement, much credit for this victory must be given. But it was not labor alone which brought about this democratic victory. Tribute must be paid to the thousands of democratic workers who labored long and hard to get out the vote. And the most of all tribute for this victory must be paid to all the American people, working men, farmers, professional men, and civil servants, businessmen, and the millions of housewives who helped swell the democratic vote. They showed uh, that they are politically alert and completely able to judge candidates and political parties on their record of performance. The American people have shown what they want. They have given the Democratic Party a challenge. The Democratic Party will live up to its great trust. <laughs> And that was the statement from Senator McGrath, ladies and gentlemen. The Democratic Party has returned victorious. President Truman, the elected president. The House and Senate apparently conclusively now in Democratic Party hands. That's the story. Perhaps you can see Senator McGrath, his young son David, Mrs. India Edwards, and other people prominent in Democratic Party circles posing for the photographers, the constant cry, just one more picture, please. Smile, Senator. Please, Mrs. Edwards, one more. A scene of riotous, happy, very, very happy reporters, Democratic Party workers, and everyone present here at this time. Happy because, mainly because, it's now all over. And so... We'll say that seems to be all from the music room of the Biltmore Hotel here in New York. They're still uh, clamoring around. One more picture. Just one more. That's all we need. <laughs> As you can see, it, uh, it represents organized and disorganized chaos. And there was Senator McGrath bestowing a kiss upon Mrs. India Edwards. Mrs. Edwards, of course, is the women's director of the National Democratic Committee. The crowd's beginning to break away now. The reporters have apparently got their story, the story that we've all been waiting for since probably early this morning, the story which is now final and complete. The photographers apparently have had just one more to last them long enough so they can get back and have their pictures developed and printed in the papers sent off on the telephoto machines. No, there are a couple more who would like just one more, Senator, please. So the Senator is obliging very amiably. There's rather an air of relief from the tension and nervousness with which everyone has been affected here, waiting for the news to be announced. Of course, Democratic Party headquarters were very confident it was only a matter of time before the news became official. <laughs> another cry goes up. This time they want the senator to pose again. There's another kiss. <laughs> Everyone applauds. Very good. Very good. They're posing, of course, in front of pictures of victorious Democratic Party candidates, President Truman and Senator Alban Barkley. And that's all for now from the music room of the Biltmore Hotel, scene of Democratic National Committee headquarters in New York City.
And back in Life NBC election headquarters, we take you for the Life NBC exclusive to the Hotel Roosevelt. Hotel, the Republican uh, headquarters. We're waiting for a statement now from someone coming to the rostrum. We've heard they've run the gamut of expressions as to whom it's going to be, and we're not going to speculate, I guess, until we actually see the gentleman come up to the podium and make the statement we're waiting for. We've heard as much as the governor will be down, or Mr. Brownell, his campaign manager, or some other member of the Dewey Party will make an appearance. All they meant in the press, the photographers, the newsreels, everyone on their toes running around here now, even though they have been working for the better part of 15, 16, or 17 hours, they're running around spry as little jackrabbits at the time, to get in on the culmination of this election that started with us with Life and NBC television at the conventions themselves when all four of these gentlemen were nominated by the respective parties. When it does happen, it's going to happen rather suddenly. That's why we very seldom take our eyes away from the podium because we have to look around a little curtain here. I can move over this way. That might help a little. Everybody peeks around, looks around. Say, Who's coming? Who's going to speak? And then every once in a while, somebody comes out and shouts to the almost empty ballroom here at the Roosevelt Hotel. events like this. And so we return you now to NBC Life campaign headquarters. Well, we've, we've had it. Uh, yes, we have. Here it is right in front of you. What you heard, of course, uh, correspondent Jim Bell that came to us. And uh, regardless of the fact that you expect this, expected this to come, whenever it does come, there's a little shock, a little something there that you can't this quite anticipate, don't you think? That We're talking, of course, about we... what this says. Governor Thomas E. Dewey today conceded the presidential election to President Truman under a New York dateline. And the time was 11.17, though the telegram was sent at 10.50. Sent at 11.10, I think Jim Bell said, at the very moment that uh, Howard McGrath, just a few moments later, Howard McGrath made his victory statement I under that big portrait of President Truman with his little 12-year-old son beside him. I think we ought to comment just a little bit, too, on the very thing we were all talking about here, that is the picture the comparison of the pictures, victory and defeat. Oh. The crowd, Senator McGrath, and the sudden switch to the Republican headquarters, not a soul there, which, of course, is 
uh, as to be expected, I suppose, in defeat. But again, there's always a little shock. As, as, ben, said, as ben said, that was one of the great political pictures That's of right. all time. That's right. That moment when the camera swept to that empty rostrum. And there was nobody there. Nobody there but the American flag and emptiness. And then finally Bob Stanton waiting. And then nobody came. And you get the news secondhand. Uh, By there, the way. There, uh, there must be, I think obviously, terrific chagrin. Uh, if you picture the situation in the Dewey thing, when twice he has come so close, in the third closest, mm. and now one of the probably the right. second closest election of all time. Now, there is the official uh, text of that telegram has just been handed to us uh, by Jim Stevenson. The text of the telegram that Dewey sent to uh, President Truman conceding the election, my heartiest congratulations to you on your election, every good wish for a successful administration. I urge all Americans to unite behind you in support of every effort to keep our nation strong and free and to establish peace in the world. Now, at the moment that Senator McGrath made his announcement and that uh, Governor Dewey conceded, actually, where Senator McGrath said that with Ohio's 25 electoral votes, the uh, truman Barkley ticket had a total of 266, which was necessary, and that they would go to 279 or more. At that moment, President Truman and Senator Barkley were running 304 electoral votes, more than Senator McGrath claimed. He of was course, they won't hold that. I don't mean to infer safe. that, but you know, he made a safe did statement. Did you notice, as we just had that picture of the tabulation, the toad board and the rest, how the activity is suddenly over? Well, I feel this way personally. Uh, maybe I'm just expressing a personal slant. But to see this, perhaps the most stunning political reverse, most, the most stunning dramatic, political surprise, most fabulous. fabulous in the history of great political movements of the world, and when you see the restrained glee of the Democratic headquarters and the unabashed uh, sadness, emptiness. emptiness of the Republican quarters, I feel as one individual a sense of humility at having witnessed a titanic struggle very, very bitterly and bravely a fought. titanic exhibition of democracy in action again. Well, gentlemen, if you'll set aside your politics, whatever they may be, and if the people who have been good enough to stay with us all this time will put theirs aside, I think we can all agree on one thing, that not politically, but looking at it from a news standpoint, this is a marvelous news story. One of the great news stories of all time. Right. What a lucky thing that three little fellows like us on this new and tremendously growing thing like television with this Life NBC team had a chance to play a part in it. It's a great privilege, and I think we ought to uh, thank the people who have been good enough to be with us through conventions and through, ele through an election. You know whom we've got to thank for this story? The American people. No question about that. Let's wrap it up then, uh, at least at this point. The uh, President of the United States re-elected is Harry Truman, Vice President there Alden Barkley. There's the simple, direct man of 64 summers and winters who fought his way against every political sage in the country and the world and won to victory. The Senate is clearly in a Democratic majority. The House is very vigorously a Democratic House. The governors. The governors, we haven't a complete tabulation of those, but surprising upset, dominantly, upsets, dominantly, dominantly democratic. democratic again. Democratic. And, and Ben, I think here too, that we all want to join with the American people, with Dewey, in wishing President Truman every good wish in his administration. Ben, this particular bulletin here is the one which precipitated Dewey's conceding and uh, Ohio was the, the payoff. Statement. Ohio that's, that's was the payoff. Oh, well, let's, let, let's read that. I think that's good. If that's the one that uh, precipitated that statement, Ben, uh, Ohio, 9,560 polling places out of 9,710. Truman, 1,435,095. Dewey, 1,421,345. There, ladies and gentlemen, is the information we're informed, which, upon reaching Governor Dewey, caused him to concede. And there is our tally board uh, with the latest figures going up. Then you were wrapping it up here. I think that was an excellent uh, idea. Go right ahead, will you? Well, uh, just as you were at that point. Uh, not for any sense of weariness, but for a sense of the story being so tremendous that our words would be puny, I thought we might tell the story simply and all bow out. But I, I just learned from Sid James of Life, who's working with Ad Schneider of NBC there, that there is a good possibility we may have a capstone to this whole show in the voice 
of the newly re-elected President of the United States. Speaking from Kansas City. That is a possibility, and I know that our television audience will want to stay with us on just the bare possibility. How soon will we know? Well, Ed, how soon will we know? Very quickly. Very quickly. quickly. Standing by right now. Be ready for a very quick Ad okay. Snyder, whom you have just seen, our director of television at NBC, has just informed us, in case his words weren't picked up by the microphones, that we expect a decision on that matter of whether we will hear President Truman's voice speaking from the Midwest. He expects a decision very shortly. We're standing by now, so if you'll bear with us a moment while we do just a bit of rehashing here until we get the definite word on that, we may have something quite worthwhile. Here are some figures on the tally board. Uh, they're perfectly obvious, scarcely necessary to read those. Uh, still about uh, a million and a quarter a million. lead. A million, a million lead, yes. Uh, right. We're ready now, I believe. Shall we call in? Well, Frank. When? How soon? Yeah. We'll, we'll have a report from... Uh, we're standing by. Frank Burkholzer, our NBC reporter in Kansas City. A whole come friend. in, come in. Frank Burkholzer in Kansas City. Are you there, Frank Burkholzer? Yeah. Fine. This is Brower. Here's Olson and Swayze. Go ahead. This is Frank Burkholzer in the Muehlbach Hotel penthouse. I'm standing in a crush of people here. President Truman is posing for newsreel and still photographers. He's smiling. Everybody has been rushing up to shake his hand and congratulate him. We have no word just yet as to when he'll make an official statement. I just talked to Charlie Ross, and Charlie says it will be a little while yet. The excitement is, is terrific here. The lid is finally blown off on this thing. The secretaries and the official family are grinning from ear to ear, jumping up and down, kissing each other, throwing their arms around each other. The Secret Service, of course, are here, but they're grinning. They're happy about the whole thing. The strong lights of the newsreel cameraman are on the president. The president now is shaking hands with some more close friends. The uh, newsmen are gathered in the background. It's a uh, terrific excitement. The president now has his arm around an old friend standing with him. His, his uh, smiles everywhere you see. The president shaking hands. The uh, photographers, you can probably hear their flash bulbs in the background. You can hear the grind of the newsreel cameras. These are, these are silent cameras, not the sound films that will probably be made later. The uh, heat in here is getting terrific from the hot lamps focused on the president to give enough light for the newsreel photography. This penthouse, which is usually a, a haven of rest for the president, is, is just a madhouse now. People pushing in and out, grinning, slapping each other on the back. And the president now is talking to photographers, joking with them about the one more club. As you know, photographers always say, one more, Mr. President, and the president has a big joke about it. He calls them members of his one more club. Here's some people crushing past me. Say a few words to the president. The, uh, the excitement is immense. And now, I think until we get a statement from the president, I'll return you to our New York studio. This is Frank Berg, host here at the Hotel Muehlbach in Kansas City. Hello, Frank. Hello, Frank. Uh, John, he's yeah. Can you get it, Frank? Okay. Hello, Frank. All right, I'll be here until we get a statement from the president. Okay, he was answering probably... No, I don't. Uh, That's what we wanted to know. All right, fine. Right? That's what you wanted to know. Okay, good. And when do you think we may expect Are we back? Uh, yeah, we're back. We're back in Life NBC head election headquarters here in New York after hearing Frank Burkholzer make his direct report from the Hotel Muehlbach in Kansas City, Missouri, standing very close, as you know, to President Truman, who has been receiving the congratulations of many of his friends relatives, the official family, and so forth. All to be expected, but all thrilling and exciting after an election is decided. I was going to say that uh, television, which has been expanding so rapidly in the past year or two, uh, still hasn't caught up with that network, which would make it possible to bring a picture as well as a voice from Kansas City to New York, although it's going out to areas in the Midwest. We're working on that, as uh, friends of NBC know, very rapidly, and those linkages will come in. I kind of think that they'll be all set from here to California and around the world when Harry Truman runs for maybe a third term. I was going to say 52 <laughs> ought, to be, ought to do it. Well, that will be, uh, that will be something when instead of hearing Frank Burkholzer, 
we could switch out there and see the pandemonium that must be reigning at the moment. Well, John, is the one, one thing hasn't been decided here yet. I want to know if Grower concedes now. <laughs> <laughs> concedes what? I can see that I've had one of the biggest punches of a reporting career. That's not as uh, many ramifications as yours, Sid, perhaps, but I think you're going to bow as a Washington and political observer, which is your specialty. This is one big story. No, big, big is a little, a little weak there, but it's a, it's a good word. You think yeah, it was an understatement? Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering here if we have, uh, we have some new information. Um, well, we've just been informed that we may go back to Kansas City at any time. We don't know that we will, but we are, uh, have been warned to be ready to switch at any moment. So if you'll bear with us, we All may right, have we'll another report. All right, we call in Frank right now. The... Go ahead, Frank Bergholzer in Kansas City. Every minute, the president has his arms around three or four people now hey, to talk hey, to the hey, hey, And uh, here now is, is Charlie Ross, the president's press secretary. Charlie, we're on the air here. Tell us a little bit about how this excitement this news feels to you. Well, this news is something terrific. Everybody here is uh, terribly happy. You can probably hear the... Uh, noise of jubilation going on here. Everybody is blocking around to congratulate the president. Dog over here shooting pictures, and here's uh, Frank Bergdahl, sir. He's getting all these sounds, I think. I hope he is. <laughs> Charlie, what was the president's reaction when uh, when the news of Governor Dewey's concession came in? Well, he had already felt that he was in. The reports earlier had uh, made it pretty clear that he was uh, elected. When he got the bill boil, uh, one of his aides came rushing in with a piece of ticker tape. And the president just, uh, well, he looked at it and smiled. That's about all. Uh-huh. Uh, we've had uh, some speculation that the president will make a statement to the radio public. Charlie. No, he's not going on the air, Frank. He's uh, another plan in mind. I'll tell you about later. Uh, there will be a little statement. He will shortly. have a statement. He will have a statement, As far as you're concerned, Charlie, he's officially president for the next four years. Is that right? That seems to be true, Frank. <laughs> Thank you very much, Charlie. This is back to the hotel studios in New York. This is Frank Burkholzer at the Hotel Mulebach in Kansas City. Uh, there's some old, uh, old Battery D buddy there. Uh, Laverne. Uh, Battery D. Uh-huh. Oh, brother. Judge Albert Ridge. Charlie Ross Did you get that? No, 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 I didn't. Uh, and matter of fact, I'm still in Kansas City in this... Uh, well, yeah, that, well, Kansas City uh, is open for us, and uh, I think our radio and television me. audience isn't getting Kansas City, but they're going to get it as soon as it develops. Uh, a lovely banging, a lovely, beautiful confusion out there. A very small noise of two microphones tapped together, amplified. Sounds like plenty clashing of steel on steel. Uh, hello, Doug, this is Williams. All right, you keep testing down there. Someone in Kansas City what is did, testing. Well, what, what did you understand, uh, 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 Frank can't hear me because the feedback doesn't get all the way around to him when, I, when I'm talking. Would you ask him if he wants me to bring him that five-minute script he left back here? Come on in and solve that for us. Ed Snyder's right here, our uh, television chief. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll beat it right back there. That's correct, isn't it? Well, we've been telling the listeners. I hope we ought to clear that up. Yeah, uh, uh, that is correct. And I yeah, uh, hope that you understood it when it was said. There was a little background noise there, and it was difficult, uh, perhaps, to pick it up. It was okay, I'll stand by phone, and that's why I wasn't sure. But Charlie right. Ross said that the president would not speak on the air. John, one thing yeah. I wanted to get solved: the American people always are interested in Margaret. Did you get that she was there? Yeah. I didn't get a word about the president. Margaret. I'm sorry to say, I don't believe. Uh, that Charlie has said that the president won't one make thing. any statement on the air. Now, whether that'll hold is hard to say, Buck. At the moment, it. Yes, that I think he means will be a mimeograph statement of some sort uh, that he'll hand out to reporters. Now, I'm going to try if the president won't go on the air live. I got my script now, by the way. If, if the president won't go on live, I'm going to try and get him to record uh, what he says for the newsreels on a wire recorder we have here, and we can play that back. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, but I ho- we'll still we've, uh, pitch for something on the air. Exciting hours. Yeah chance to participate in one of the great news stories of all time. And uh, we'd like to uh, have our friends of NBC and Life Television 
uh, see something a little bit unusual, we think. Uh, maybe we'll get the signal arranged so that we can present this to them. Uh, when you give me the signal that you want to have this uh, little bit of uh, unusual political Americana shown to our viewers. Uh, it's something that uh, I think will express in a few, uh, few simple pictures something of the spirit of the man which we saluting, the whole nation and the world is saluting tonight. And I think at this point, you can take over in very good shape here, and I'm going to ease out of the picture, as Sid Olson just did, but I, want to, I do want to say thanks uh, to the people who've been with us, and I know you'll uh, add the thanks of all of us when you finally wind up. Right? I, d I do, John. I'll be joining you in a minute. Fine. As uh, we're coming to the simple closing to such tremendous a story that it needs no underlining from us. And now uh, we have something special to show you. A prediction made months ago by a man who fought hard and who won. We ask you to look and listen. I want to say to you that for the next four years, there'll be a Democrat in the White House and you're looking at him. <laughs> That was Harry Truman in Philadelphia some four months ago. That was the Harry Truman who spoke to the people of America from campaign train, from platform, from appearances in the newsreels and on the radio, who spoke with simple directness that brought him the great prize he sought, re-election as President of the United States. A simple story told in those few words which has taken some 14 to 16 hours of continuous telecasting by Life and NBC, who have been privileged to bring you, the American television audience, this one of the greatest news stories of all time. So speaking for all of us of Life and NBC, for John Cameron Swayze, for Sid Olson, for Sid James, for Frank McNaughton, and I hope you'll forgive me for leaving any of the names out, for the dozens and dozens of technicians and computers and technicians and operators and all of the myriad staff employed in bringing you this full coverage, May I, Ben Grauer, simply say thank you for being with us, and it's been a tremendous experience for us all. We're signing off now and concluding this, the live NBC television coverage of the 1948 national election.